Let's go ahead and look at a couple of examples that have to do with the money multiplier and the increase in overall deposits and money supply. But we're going to take a look at two things that look very similar, but there's a distinct difference that we need to make sure that we're aware of. Over here, we're going to show if the initial deposit was a cash deposit. Over here, the initial deposit is coming from the central bank, or the Federal Reserve here in the United States. Let's assume that the required reserve ratio is 20%. So let's say we know that the required reserve ratio is 20%. We'll work on the cash side first. Well, we also know then that the money multiplier is equal to 1 over 0 0.20, which is equal to 5. And therefore, my change in total deposits is going to equal that $1,000 times 5, which is equal to 5,000 dollars. The simple deposit multiplier tells us how much deposits will change by maximum if we have an initial deposit. So overall deposits change by 5,000. But what about money supply? How much was there a change in money supply? Well, before the deposit, we had $1,000 already as currency. We had $1,000. After, we have $5,000 in overall deposits. Remember our money supply, our M1, is cash plus deposits, our currency plus our deposits. It's the amount of spendable assets that are out there. So the overall change, Right? Delta for change has to be $4,000. If the initial deposit comes from within the money supply already, you need to make sure that you take it out so you're not double counting. We know that the simple deposit multiplier is telling us that this is going to get multiplied by 5, so this $1,000 cash deposit will change deposits by 5000 But this $1,000 was already there. So that's why it's a $4,000 change in the money supply. We do the exact same thing over here for the Fed. If we know the required reserve ratio is 20%, and we have this money multiplier, which is equal to 1 over the required reserve, which is 1 over 0.2, which is equal to 5. Therefore, again, my change in deposits is going to equal that $1,000 times 5, which is $5,000. No matter what, that first question of how much do deposits change by, how much do total deposits change by, is going to be the same. It's $5,000. But again, what about the money supply? Well, what was the money supply before? It was zero because this money from the Federal Reserve or from some outside organization was not part of currency or checking accounts. And now after, we see it is that $5,000. So the change in the money supply is going to be the full $5,000. This is very important. It's a very important distinction that a lot of students get mixed up. You have to figure out where that initial deposit came from. If it was already in M1, we have to take it out. If it wasn't M1 to begin with, then the change in the deposits is going to equal the change in the money supply.